Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and recently I made a video on a Flat Earther called Level Earth Observer. Now, this video wasn't really a debunking video, as there wasn't much to debunk in Level Earth Observer's video, but Level Earth Observer did leave a comment. Now, Level Earth Observer has kindly agreed to read out his own comment for us, so take it away, Level Earth Observer. I didn't mean to read it out in flatter. Fine, I'll just read it out myself. Obviously, you provided zero practicality to refute me, but I'll say this. You presented your video in a very respectful manner, which is something of a rarity these days. Good on you. So first off, thank you Level Earth Observer for the feedback. It is very much appreciated, even if I do like to take the mick out of flat earthers that leave comments. Although, I am a little bit confused because you say that I presented my video in a respectful manner, which I'm not going to complain about that, but I did take a couple of jabs at you throughout the video. Now, I may not have outright called you a fucking idiot, but I mean, come on, that was implied. But again, I'm not complaining about that. Now, the interesting part of your comment was the obviously you provided zero practicality to refute me part. Now, I will agree that I did provide little practicality to refute you, because in your video, there wasn't really anything to refute. Sure, you are wrong on a few things, and I corrected you, but there wasn't much else to refute, to be honest. So that is why I'm making this video, because this video will be more of a debunk of one of Level Earth Observer's other videos. And I sure hope that it's better than the SpaceX video, because... Otherwise, I'm going to be disappointed in you. Now, I did find a video that looks promising. The problem is, is that it's part two. And on first glance, part one doesn't appear to exist. But I did find a video that looks like it could be a part one. So that's the video that we're going to look at. And I will be tackling Level Earth Observer's part two video, but that's going to be in a part two to this video. That's why this video has part one under it because that's how you do parts, Level Earth Observer. So the video that we're taking a look at today is Flat Earth, Simon Dan vs. Reality, which I'm assuming is part one to Flat Earth, The Globe is Scientifically Impossible Part Two. Again, I couldn't find part one, so take it away, Level Earth Observer. Now, if it wasn't bad enough for the cannonball tribe religion, we have Captain Sensible's balloon of delusion being shot down by common sense the other day. Oh, you mean Mr. Sensible's mage balloon, the one that provides very good evidence that Earth is a sphere. Yeah, I doubt that it's being shot down. We've now got the number one globagandist coming back. Oh, that's me, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the number one, aren't I? Rising up to the top of the scientific tables, citing an airfix model as somehow proof that demonstrable reality's got it wrong. Uh, airfix? I, uh... No, I don't remember doing anything with, with airfix, no. Here we're going to see Dan's so-called debunk. Ah, Dan, yeah. Of course. Simon Dan. He's the number one, isn't he? Not me course Simon Dunn. Always Simon Dunn. Sorry cats but I guess Simon Dan is just more popular. So first thing I don't think Simon Dan is citing an airfix model. Maybe you think it is but reality doesn't bend to conform to how your thoughts want it to be. And the second thing is that Simon Dan isn't trying to disprove demonstrable reality. That's the job of flat earthers such as yourself. Here we're going to see Dan's so-called debunk. This is the only thing we get from these propagandists. They can't provide any real practicality, any real demonstrable science. Well, I've actually found that it tends to be flat earthers that fail to demonstrate any kind of practicality because they don't give anything beyond a very simple explanation for why things happen. Take, for example, Anthony Riley's relative density, which has very little practical use as opposed to a 9.81 meters per second per second acceleration towards the ground. In Riley's relative density, the acceleration towards the ground is caused by a difference of the density of an object and the medium that it's in, like air for example. Now theoretically, if this were the case, you would be able to enclose a substance, like water, in much denser material, 
and it would have no force pushing it down towards the ground. But there is a consequence to this. Let's say that you have a water tower which is completely full with water so that the water is surrounded by something that is of a density that is greater than the water. In the case of relative density, the pressure that the water exerts on the container that it is being held within should be roughly equal along the sides. There should be more pressure being exerted upon the top because apparently things that are less dense like to try and go up compared to things that are more dense. However, reality disagrees because as you go down, more pressure is being exerted on the sides of the container. This is because regardless of the density of the medium that it is surrounded by, the water in that container is still being pulled down towards Earth. And the water that's at the bottom of that container has the weight of all the water above it pushing down on it, and that water also pushes against the sides of the container. Now this has some practicality because it means that if you want to build a water tower, the bottom of the water tower needs to have the most reinforcement compared to the top of the water tower because the bottom of the water tower is going to experience the most pressure from the water inside of it. And that is just one example of a time when a flat earther gave an explanation that had no practicality in reality. Instead, they have to defend their delusions. In this case, we've got Dan defending an airfix model as somehow proof that we all live on a cannibal flying for a vacuum. Well, quite often flat earthers will say that something looks like CGI or looks like a model without actually giving any evidence. And so me and Simon and Dan will say something like, well, you may say that, but where's your actual evidence that it is? Just because something looks like it's CGI doesn't mean that it is. In fact, Simon and Dan's legs look like CGI. And I was just informed by NASA that they most definitely aren't CGI. So it's not looking good, is it, for the Cannonball tribe, the pantomime boys? They seem to have lost their way. He really likes using the word pantomime, doesn't he? Like he just learnt that word and wants to use it all the time. In fact, I might do a bit of theatre-ish stuff later in the video. So let's have a look just at the tail end of Dan's delusional, airfix dribbling, piece of propaganda. Bear with me. I don't want to influence your decision here, but if you're going to ask me, we've just zoomed in on a model here. Okay, so please fix up your audio when playing videos because it sounds absolutely terrible, and that's probably because your phone microphone is picking up audio from your speaker. Just put on headphones when you play a video. It's really that easy. I'll show you. I've got headphones on right now and we're gonna play your video and I'll watch. I could probably knock something up better for 40 quid. Highly unlikely, LEO. I mean, do try, it'd be fun seeing. Let's carry on. Ow. Look here. The audio just went from bad to, to worse. How? Official footage. So I'll pose the question. Is that real? Yes. Or is that just a cheap, tacky model? No. You tell me. He really is incredulous, isn't he? So I have to agree with Simon and Dan here because you may say that it looks like a model to you. That doesn't mean that it looks like a model to everyone else. A good example here would be when I went on a plane. All the cars on the ground looked like little toy cars that if I could open the window, I'd be able to stick my hand out and grab one of them and play with them like when I was a kid. But I don't think that anyone's going to try and convince me that when I'm in a plane, all the cars that I see on the ground are toy cars. The irony of Dan's comment there, the fact that he defends and cites airfix models as somehow proof that the monster board reality has got it wrong. So Simon Dan wasn't really citing anything there. You brought up something that you thought was evidence that the ISS is fake and he was telling you that no it's not evidence that the ISS is fake. That's not really a citation because he's not cited any kind of real demonstrable science. But neither did you. From that clip that you showed you just showed a video which you thought was fake and said, oh look, this looks like it's fake to me, so therefore it must be. That's not science. 
He has to actually the globe's number one top boy actually has to defend Airfix models as proof that reality has got it wrong. But weren't you citing what you called an Airfix model to show that globe earthers have it wrong or am I just getting everything mixed up here? I want to take on board Airfix models as my reality. I want to be able like you to dribble at CGI and Airfix models. Well that is actually pretty easy if you're able to forget that CGI has gotten pretty good these days. Go back and watch the original Star Wars movies. Then you can be amazed at the state of the art CGI and special effects and airfix models. And who knows, you might be so amazed by it that you'll take on the Death Star as your reality. Dan, can you cite a scientific demonstration refuting the three things of demonstrable truth I'm about to quote to you? Oh no, is he about to do the Wotan or Nathan Thompson three things that prove to me that the Earth is not a globe thing? Oh dear. One. It's impossible to have a vacuum next to an air pressure system without solid separation. Yep, that was exactly where he was going with that. Unfortunately for him though, he's wrong. So the first thing we have to understand is why he thinks this. And the reason why is because if you've got a high pressure area and the rest of the pressure is low around it, then that high pressure will disperse until all the pressure in the room or whatever is homogeneous. So that will be true under certain conditions, provided that the room is not too large and that you're using something like air. If you were to have a room that's a couple of kilometers high, then the air pressure at the top of the room would be lower than the air pressure at the bottom of the room. Now this is in part due to the fact that the air at the bottom of the room will have the weight of all the air above it pushing down on it. Now we've heard this earlier on in the video and the reason why is because this is some Pretty basic fluid dynamics. If you have a fluid, the fluid at the bottom will have the rest of the fluid above it pushing down on it. And air is a type of fluid. Now level earth observer might say, well that's all good and all, but can you give me any evidence that this is the case with the atmosphere? And yes I can. You see, when it comes to the atmosphere, as you rise in elevation, the air pressure drops. This is something that any person who's tried climbing a mountain will be able to tell you. This is also the reason why aircraft cabins are pressurized because when you go to the altitude that planes fly at, the air pressure is so low that people can suffer from hypoxia. Two, the behavior of water makes it impossible for water to wrap and conform to the outside of different shapes. Let me just add here a description of the way things fall doesn't change the molecular structure of water. So here's a quick question. What determines the shape of water? Now I am going to give you everyone the answer really soon, but if you want to pause the video and take a quick stab in the comments, be my guest. You done that? All right, let's go. So the shape of water is determined by the forces acting upon it. So that means that if you have forces acting on water to make it conform to a ball, then that is the shape that water will take. Three, tower cranes scientifically, undeniably prove without a shadow of a doubt that the earth is not a spinning ball. Wait, what the f- where did tower cranes come from? That, that came out of nowhere. Level Earth Observer seems to have an unhealthy obsession with tower cranes. Now I do think that he's probably a tower crane operator, but that would be like me trying to use programming as my primary source for why I think that Earth is a globe. Now I will use programming from time to time to make a point, generally with calculations, but it isn't my primary source. And also he didn't provide any evidence whatsoever for why tower cranes prove that the Earth is not a globe. So uh, you can't really respond to that point because there is no point to respond to. There's not one single practical demonstrable bit of science on earth to refute what I've just said. Those three globe destructions or globe destroying truths. Except for of course the entire body of fluid dynamics which fluid dynamics is a part of science so yeah there's that. 
and there's no one on earth that can refute that with any kind of science. But I just did, so you're wrong. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> well, dear, oh dear, oh dear indeed. That will be it for this video, except for a little bit at the end. But leave a like and subscribe if you liked this video. Make sure you ring the bell so that you're notified when part 2 comes out because just because you subscribe doesn't mean that you're getting notifications. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus? Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Wolfie, Mori, and The Friendly Antinatalist. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. A link should appear there soon. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. There is a word I like that word is pantomime I know I'll win the fight If I say it all the time The best proof I've got Is my tower crane But I've got no more thoughts Left in my brain I'm a... Uh, a... Uh, uh, Hellio Hellio Come on.